just just get out of the you know the dumps yeah. you know yeah. let's go running <laughs> you know and it, it's not that it yeah. is not that hi and welcome back to mind wide open my mental health focus interview series Today, I am talking to Duff McKagan, who is best known for being the basis of the band Guns N' Roses. He is also an author, journalist, advocate, and activist, and someone who's a really strong example of speaking openly about his struggles with addiction and mental health. Um, I got so much out of doing this interview, and I hope that you guys do as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. And hi, Duff. Hi. How are you? I'm good. You guys see Lily's lighting? Or that's, just, <laughs> that's just youth. Right? Is that just you? This is my glow. Uh, <laughs> it's great to see you. You too. How are you doing today? I'm good. I actually just woke up maybe like <laughs> one hour ago. So you're fresh. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm coffeeed up. Perfect. So I'd love to start just by talking about our similar experiences growing up in Seattle. You grew up in in a big family with lots of siblings, uh, and you shared with me that you had your first panic attack as a teenager. Can you recount that experience of your first panic attack? I can recount that, yeah. I grew up in Seattle, last of eight kids. Wow. Um, and uh, at 16, I was still living at my mom's. Mm -hmm. I went to take a shower before going to school, and um, just like any other day, but suddenly the, the floor dropped like three mm -hmm. feet. And I thought, I thought something happened to the house. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> suddenly I couldn't breathe and I was sweating in the shower. Mm -hmm. And I remember just pushing the shower door open, crawling out on the floor, putting a towel on and yelling for my mom. She took me to wow. the ER up at Group Health, the hospital here. And, mm -hmm. uh, took me to the emergency room. They realized nothing was wrong. I think they did an EKG and... You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then they sent me over to this uh, a therapist office, mm -hmm. and he kind of took out a shockboard and drew drew a schematic of what was happening. He says a panic attack that gave me Valium. Mm. It ran in my family. Some of my brothers and sisters had this, but my brothers are so much older. It's just not cool. To talk. It wasn't cool to talk about. It wasn't. Uh, you know, in my case, it wasn't manly to talk about. Mm, Just, mm -hmm. You dealt with it. So uh, a friend of mine, when I was 18, had read an article or a book uh, where she told me that, uh, she informed me that, you know, millions of people have these things that you have. And that was the first time I knew anyone else had, had panic attacks. Wow. So that kind of gave me a bit of hope. I didn't feel alone. Yeah. I discovered what happens with all of us as human beings you, dig, you discover ways to cope mm -hmm. and uh, I, I found that alcohol mm -hmm. uh, was a great coping mechanism for me so I, I spent the next 12 you know 13 12 13 years uh, with my coping mechanism of, of a lot of alcohol and drugs so as we know, addiction and mental health are intrinsically intertwined, and you can't really talk about one without talking about the other. Um, and my dad talked about publicly how he struggled with addiction as a form of self-medication for mental health issues. Could you speak a little bit more to your experience with self-medicating for mental health issues? Yeah, what, what happens is uh, you get into this, because with, with alcohol, there's sort of sugar in alcohol, and yeah. you... And with a guy like myself, and I think with your dad as well, you know, you can't just do a little, because mm -hmm. a little doesn't work after a while. So you got to mm -hmm. do more to get that same feeling. And so in my case, I got up to a, a two half gallons of vodka a day, a full gallon of vodka a day. Wow. And there's so oh, much God. sugar in that. Yeah. Uh, and then I was doing, you know, cocaine mm -hmm. to, so I could drink longer. Cocaine's not good for panic attacks. As <laughs> I can't even imagine. It's, it's the opposite of good for yeah. panic attacks. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I would take um, pills as well to, mm -hmm. to bring me down. Too mm -hmm. much cocaine, the alcohol's not working, so mix mm -hmm. alcohol, pills, cocaine. Um, and then still function in your, in your band, and I could do all that stuff and function and play and... and 
until I could, you know, at, yeah. at about 28 and 29, it started to come up. My hair started to fall out, mm. uh, like break off. I started to get, my, my body was starting to show it, like, like huge boils and, and mm. my uh, feet would crack when I'd walk, you know, like the bottom of my feet would crack. Wow. My body was drying out. At 30, I just moved back to Seattle, got the house in mm -hmm. Seattle, kind of my dream scenario. Of, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd moved to L.A. to be in the band and then uh, was able to buy this house that I'm still in, the house I'm in right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, I had my pancreas burst from drinking too much mm -hmm. in this house. Wow. My, my friend took me out to Northwest. They said, how much does, does he drink? What else does he do? He told them everything, so they had to uh, get me off alcohol with Librium in my mm -hmm. other arm. So I'm, I'm not having a panic attack. I'm in so much pain. Yeah. I'm on Librium, which is like massive doses of value. Gotcha. I'm on morphine okay. for the pain. Yeah. And they're weaning me off the alcohol, and I was in there for about 14 days. And uh, so I was sober. Yeah. <laughs> when I got out of the hospital yeah. and they had a rehab for me to go to mm -hmm. and I was really I'd seen some things in the hospital my mom coming in she had Parkinson's she was in mm -hmm. a wheelchair mm -hmm. I'm the last eight kids I should be taking care of her not the other way around yeah. that really struck me but here I was out of the hospital how am I going to deal with panic attacks now without alcohol and, and were, you, were you off any, like, anti-anxiety or antidepressants at that time as well? I never took antidepressants. You never did? Okay. Yeah, so there began, began that journey yeah. of uh, a doctor. So th the problem was, how am I going to deal with panic attacks? So they, uh, they tried Paxil on me, which w wasn't good for me. Mm -hmm. Just very sluggish. Mm-hmm. Um, I found, in my case, I found, I had to go back to L.A. Mm -hmm. um, even getting on a plane, you know, like this sure. metal tube. Yeah. You know, I was at a point I couldn't take elevators, anything that, that you know, you're stuck inside of. Yeah. Because um, that would trigger my panic attacks for mm -hmm. whatever reason. I, I, I believe it was fate that took me to this dojo that I'm still... Mm -hmm. um, that I still practice it's, uh, a martial art called Yukita Khan. Mm -hmm. It looks like kickboxing, but there's a there's a spiritual side of it, uh, meditation side. Beautiful. That I I saw in the sensei at, when I first went into the dojo. I saw mm -hmm. it in his eyes, the mm -hmm. calm, and uh, and I just basically followed him around for the next couple of years, doing what he told me to do. Amazing. And, uh, so I, I found a place in meditation where I could go to a safe place that I could deal with panic attacks. And it got my place of strength got stronger than my panic attacks. Sure, sure. Uh, and, uh, but even, you know, I still had Xanax in my backpack um, just in case. Mm -hmm. And just knowing I had that it was always a great back. So I was 30 when my pancreas burst. I had mm -hmm. 10 and a half years of sobriety. I had these, these pills. Um, I was in Europe with Velvet Revolver. I wasn't having a panic attack. I was under a lot of stress. So I took one of the pills for stress. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so with this kind of combination of alcoholism and having these pills, what, what people got to be careful of, uh, I'm here to tell you, mm -hmm. is don't start taking those pills for another reason. Because, mm -hmm. especially if you have alcoholism in your in your past, because yeah. I suddenly awoke myself to, oh, this is how I take care of stress. And I was up to 20 of those pills a day in, in wow. within five days. Wow. Enough to oh kill anybody God. else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, because you have this alcoholism progressive I picked up where I would have been sure. if I kept drinking or kept what drinking. and I, I've never heard that term used to describe addiction what what does progressive mean in that context like I moved from a pint mm -hmm. of vodka to mm -hmm. a fifth of vodka mm -hmm. to 
a half gallon of vodka to two half gallons of vodka at the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. So my, just because I stopped doesn't mean my body didn't st still keep going. Oh, it went up okay. to a bottle, you know, a gallon and a half sure. of vodka without sure. me knowing it. It went up yeah. to, so when I picked up these pills again, you know, going from one pill on a Wednesday yeah. to 20 by the following Monday, yeah. my body was like, I need a lot more than one. Yeah. And so I discovered what progressive disease meant in, in that case. <laughs> yeah, quickly. Um, yeah, and I had to get off those things. And, uh, yeah. you know, it was a lot of shame involved in that, like mm. telling my wife, I had two mm -hmm. little girls at the time, coming home and, and kicking these pills, and it was fucking awful. And, mm. uh, and then panic attacks started coming in again mm. after I got off these pills because I, I think... A lot of things can trigger my panic attacks, and I figured out one of them was shame, disappointment in myself. Yeah. Uh, I'd done, a, you know, some martial arts. You know, I was a black belt in this, you know, martial art. I'm, people come to me for help. Sure. And I'm the one, you know, uh, that's on his knees. And I think for me in my life, I believe I've gone through certain things mm -hmm. just to help others, and I think that was one of them. What was that process like telling telling Susan? It wasn't cool. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I I was in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, came back here to this house in Seattle. Mm -hmm. You know, Sus it's it's 85 degrees out in Seattle. And you, yeah. and you know what that feels like. It yeah. feels like 95 anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right? like the desert, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were out in the backyard playing. I'm, I'm trying to kick this stuff called turkey. Mm -hmm. I'm up in my bedroom with two coats on, mm. sick as a dog, watching them play, and I should be playing with them. I just got back from Europe, and uh, I, you know, I said I was sick, I was tired, blah, 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 just lying, you know? Yeah. And she came back up inside to the bedroom, and, and I was throwing up in the toilet, and mm. she goes, what, what is wrong? And I had to tell her. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm kicking drugs, and she looked at me like I was a Martian. She goes, what do you mean? Yeah. And uh, I said, I, I told her everything. And I called a friend. He came and picked me up and took me to an NA meeting. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wearing two coats. It, <laughs> it's 85 out. In the meeting, it's like 105 because there's no yeah. AC in this meeting. And some guy, <laughs> some friend asked, you know, what's your friend coming off of? Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't even there. Yeah. Uh, He's like, coming off at Xanax. Wow. Yeah, how much? Like 20 milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. how's, how's he coming off of this? Well, he's uh, cold turkey. And, and the guy said, he, he can't do that. He can have a seizure. Wow. So then I have that. Like Yeah. So I had to That's go. That's all you need to hear to have a panic attack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I, you know, I went to a doctor. At that point, I went to a doctor. And mm -hmm. uh, we did it right. And uh, But, yeah, that shame... That shame held it held for for a while. I still probably have pieces of it in me still. And my wife has been nothing more than uh, supportive and gracious about the whole thing. She understands. Like this happens to you, you guys. Flash forward a few years, my wife and I, I you know, I travel so much in in my life. And as the girls got older, Susan could come with me and for longer periods of time and the girls would come out and mm -hmm. uh, we were back in Seattle, Susan and I, everything's fine in my life. We went to the movies, a movie about Margaret Thatcher, nothing gnarly. <laughs> and uh, I was 50 years old and mm -hmm. we're sitting in the seats watching the movie. And again, the, the chair dropped three feet. I mm -hmm. thought there was an earthquake. Yeah. So I went to go, you know, I braced myself and I went to go look up at Susan and she was right next to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't drop three feet. Mm -hmm. And um, I had this time, instead of a panic attack, it was this extremely morose downward spiral. Wow. And that's when I realized that they said panic attacks are a symptom of depression. I was going into a full spiral depression. And it happened like that. Lily. In an instant, yeah. In an instant. And yeah. she, she got me out of the theater. Yeah. 
uh, I still never finished that movie. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, she got me to the hospital. I'm sure people are watching this, and I'm not sure what your experiences are, mm -hmm. Lily, with, with that side of panic. If you haven't got it, I hope you never do. But it is dealable. Um, so I, I had a, a, I call that first one a depression attack mm -hmm. because they gave me something that night that really calmed me down. I didn't go on Wellbutrin or anything to kind of get me back up because I didn't want to have a panic attack. And yeah. uh, so you got to, I got to deal with that, like kind of drug free. Um, yeah. So I went back to my martial art. I, we, uh, that one came and it went. It went in about 36 hours. But suddenly, again, your mind, your being is awoken to what, what, what's capable of what can happen to you. Sure. And, I, uh, think, I think it's so important to share that you have, that that's something you've experienced throughout your life from the age of 16 to in your 50s. Because I think there can be this misconception that anxiety and depression and other mental health struggles are things that need to be like overcome and eradicated uh right. whereas the reality of it is you need to learn how to you know they never disappear but you learn tools to integrate it into your daily life and and make it so that you can handle it as they come instead of it you know completely derailing you when, when I mean, was your your you you deal with panic attacks yeah yeah, yeah. And um, so how old were you my first one, I mean, I have a, a similar story as, as you in the shower at 16. Like, my first panic attack, I was 12 at an Indian restaurant in West Seattle. You know, nothing bad was happening. Like, I, I had run anxious my whole life, but had never had, you know, there's a difference between anxiety yeah. attack and panic attack. Um, and sitting there, like, curry's about to come. I remember the waiter was standing there looking at me, and then all of a sudden just had this, like, feeling of kind of that hot flash just this feeling in my head and I turned and looked at the waiter and went I need to go to the hospital <laughs> and he's looking at me like why are you telling me you know it's just that moment and yeah. like you said it happens in an instant the bottom drops out and I was like something's happening to me and immediately went like I might have a brain tumor or something's wrong with my heart and and the same experience my mom took me to the hospital got an EKG you same. know and, and went through that whole process and then um you know had had the explanation of like it's a it's a chemical imbalance in your brain you know there's you don't <laughs> as much as I w made the doctor confirm for me I didn't have a brain tumor there was nothing right. wrong with my heart yeah that you you brought up something like you run anxious and mm -hmm. and, and there is a difference between it like a panic attack like mm -hmm. I, I know people have said oh yeah I I get those all the time I I'm, I'm anxious yeah and, and, a, very and a, it's situation. a very different thing. I think <laughs> yeah. if you run anxious, probably the good news is you can find some meditation. I know that definitely works for me yeah. for any time. Because I can go now, I can go if I needed to. I could go to my <clears throat> my safe place. Mm -hmm. if, if I was getting anxious in this conversation, yeah. I could just turn for 10 seconds yeah. and be okay. Yeah. Um, so there's there's ways to deal with that. And the panic attacks, yeah, it's, it is a, a, a fight or flight gets stuck on. Yeah. So it, that happened at 50, that first depression attack, we mm -hmm. call it. Uh, Guns N' Roses, my, my band, we, we get back together. We mm -hmm. get, and it's, and so the relationships are wonderful. We're, we're <clears throat> you know, communicating as, as grown men. And it's like, yeah. this is perfect. I'm sober. Just, yeah. I get to experience this thing again as a as a grown man and wow. really yeah. like appreciate what what's going on. Appreciate how good Axel is. Appreciate how good Slash is. How the rest of the good musicians they all are. Really have this like warmth for how many people are coming to see the band and be present for it. Yeah, and present, totally mm -hmm. present. And uh, so we do the stadium tour of the U.S. and it, it goes. It was great. My point to this, saying all this, is that everything was going wonderful. So we get a, my body was pretty, pretty uh, wasted. Yeah. So we had a masseuse come over to the house. And so a woman we know. Um, and I lay down, face down, my mm -hmm. head's in the cradle. 
and suddenly that sliding down into mm. the ground thing happens. Yeah. Again, nothing's going wrong in my life. Yeah. Relationship with my wife is great. Kids are now they're getting ready for college, all this stuff. Everything's going great. Yeah. I grab for um, the masseuse. I grab her arms. She's like, do you want me to stop there? <laughs> and I said, no, and I'm crying, you know. And, wow. and I'm not ashamed to, to say it, you know, because yeah. I think the stigma of men having to be tough it out, you know. Totally. Is, uh, it's just such old... It's a, such an old school uh, thought process. Yeah. So I'm in the massage chair and I slide down. This one is different. It's much more severe than that one I had in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to a therapist. Uh, the therapist took one look at me and said, you have to go to a psychiatrist right mm -hmm. now. So uh, they found me the psychiatrist that deals with people in sobriety as well, which yeah. is great. My fight or flight had got, I didn't have panic attacks or anything out of the road, yeah. so I didn't notice it. Yeah. Maybe because I can deal with them so well now. Mm -hmm. um, it had been stuck on, and when it gets stuck on, mm -hmm. you, that it'll drive you into depression. And, mm -hmm. uh, wow, okay, yeah. What, yeah, so she took out like a plastic brain, and yeah. like, which I love. I love, like, <laughs> show me. Yes, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she goes, it just got stuck on. It, it, it mm -hmm. does this, and it got stuck. I had to go to South America in four weeks. Yeah. And I, yeah. I couldn't really function. And yeah. what I do is just try to, I get in my gym. Mm -hmm. And that's how I deal. And I, even if I don't feel like it, I'll get on the elliptical and go mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. And I'll do 100 push-ups, and I'll mm -hmm. get out and run. And mm -hmm. I wrote about this in, a, in one of the books that I wrote. I wrote about how you deal with this and how yeah. I deal with it. And I got to my dojo, and I'd have to be driven there. You know, yeah, I couldn't sure. wrap. I couldn't even wrap my own hands yeah. with, with, you know, the, the wraps. Yeah. So my sensei, same sensei, I guess, like I got you. You know, you want to. We're gonna fight through this thing uh, with the medication and with the help of many others. It takes a village. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and I couldn't even talk about it at first because I couldn't talk. I just, yeah. And I'm like, how am I going to go play South America? Am I yeah. going to let my band down? You know, the first couple of rehearsals were rough. I was like, <laughs> I saw myself from above playing. Yeah. My hands were working. You know, yeah. nobody else noticed. And uh, Slash knew I was, I told two, two of the people there yeah. I was going through this. And Slash has kind of been my, a safe person for me throughout this. I met him when I first moved to L.A. Mm -hmm. I told him I had these panic attacks. He, he listened. He's like, okay, well, uh, if it happens, we'll, we'll deal with it. And I've, I had plenty around him. And he knows just to yeah. talk to me about something, anything but the panic attack. Totally. Right? Yeah. And start talking about, hey, the, you know. Uh, first Led Zeppelin record, you know. Did you <laughs> notice they went into a, you know, whatever. Yeah, how about the Mariners, huh? That's how about the, those, <laughs> the yeah. classic Seattle one. How about those Mariners, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I got through that, that bout of depression. I'm still on uh, a minute amount of uh, this medication. I take it at night. It doesn't mm -hmm. affect me in any way. Uh, I probably could go off of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I feel great. I'm not having panic attacks. Yeah. Um, I'm not having depression. Mm -hmm. I'm 56. Mm -hmm. I hope to keep it going this way. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting you talk about that looking down and, um, and watching yourself play. That's definitely that dissociative and like depersonalization aspect of, of anxiety and depression is something that I've struggled with a lot. But like grounding when it comes to that dissociation has been something that I've had to look into and, and get a lot of tools around. Um, did you find any grounding techniques that worked well for you? Yes, yes. And that's what I found when I went to, uh, got into the martial arts. And sure. it's, it's, it's a concentration meditation. Yeah. Uh, which took me a while to, to understand and to get into. Yeah. Uh, at first, even me, I was struggling I, I wanted what my sensei had, which was this calm 
you could tell the first I mean if you met him now mm -hmm. you would you would the first thing you would recognize is he has something else mm -hmm. you know there's something mm -hmm. else and his mind and body and spirit are aligned yeah to where anything can happen at any time and he's prepared it, wow. it doesn't matter because he's prepared yeah which is absolutely the ultimate goal ultimate <laughs> if you, goal yeah if you could achieve that i mean yeah yeah so i i've been i've been trying to get there just sure. e even if i get a semblance of what he has um, sure and I know that we've talked about this, you and my dad toured together in the early 90s before you were sober. Yeah. Um, and then you bonded more when your daughter May was born, like what, like two weeks after I was? Yeah. In the past, we've talked about times as well where you found that validation and solidarity in talking to my dad about mental health. Um, what were some of the helpful conversations that you guys had about it? We had so many similarities. And the, kind of the biggest similarity we had was we had these mental issues mm -hmm. you know and some of the conversations were like is it like being from big families like what you know what is this about but sure. um i had told him about you know this dojo go to and and i really found a, a way to deal mm -hmm. with this mm -hmm. and uh and your dad brought his boat over to my house he's like can i is it cool if I keep my boat here so I can ski this summer? Sorry, yeah. you can, can you hear my dog? <laughs> but okay, we, I, I, it's, you know, it's probably our conversations were no different than the conversation you and I are having right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, how do you deal with this, you know, mm -hmm. um, traveling so much? Uh, you know, you know, I'm always here mm -hmm. if you need, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that, that sort of thing. He had other stuff that I, I didn't know, and his was depression. And mm -hmm. I then I, I remember having my depression attack and talking to him somewhere out there. Yeah. Like, dude, I had depression. Yeah. I know what it is now. Yeah. That's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, there was a kind of a group, there was a few, there was a few other people I won't name mm -hmm. um, who have struggled with it. Mm -hmm. that when I was in my 30s and 40s, I'm like, Come on, depression. Just, just get out of the, you know, the dumps. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> let's go running. You know, it, it's not that. It yeah. is not that. Yeah, there's such a misconception around that that it's, you have it in your personal power to just go outside and smile and like you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish it was that easy, Jeez, but it's yeah. not. It's it's, it's yeah. chemical, like you said. You just, but my my meditation. I I, I built myself this little like, a uh, house, and I go down it this trail to get to my house and in my house I kind of have everything I need to deal with whatever I kind of just say I have herbs in there I have patience I have mm -hmm. strength I have calm yeah I have everything I need yeah. I have uh, yeah, you know I've, I've used it in my marriage I've mm -hmm. used it raising my kids mm -hmm. uh, I've gone to my, my little place to mm -hmm put together a big ass toy set you know <laughs> okay <laughs> you can do this yeah but not to take it lightly because it's yeah. it's saved my ass you know yeah. so many times and um yeah you, you won't find me getting angry like if, if some dude comes up on me and calls me a punk or something i you won't f find me that's not a flashpoint for me because yeah. i can go to my place in about two seconds yeah and deal with that situation appropriately what do you tell um, your daughters, Grace and May, about mental health and addiction? I've told them everything. Yeah. At 15, uh, when mm -hmm. each of them turned 15. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys are going to drink. You're going to try drugs. I'm not a dad who lives in this fantasy. Like, just don't do drugs. I know you're going to do it. Um, and you might like something. And like me, I like something. You're going to chase that first high or that mm -hmm. first drink. Because yeah. sorry, you got half of me in you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And where yeah. that's going to take you is uh, some pretty, it's going to take you to the ER at North, Northwest Hospital at 30 yeah. years of age with, with a busted, you know, uh, organ. Yeah. And it's not, it's not cool. So just, you know, talk to me as you're going yeah. through this journey and I'll be your consigliere. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I think both of them are, are fine. 
when it cool. comes to that. Cool. And I'm sure having an example in you of someone who talks about it so openly um, can only be helpful. You know, right. you're so open with them, but you're also, I mean, open to the public, which I think is a really special and amazing thing. And in your books and columns and interviews, you're a vocal advocate and activist. Um, and it's super important for me to have people like you that are public figures in the series who are willing to be open and honest. Um, you know what's funny? My boat just floated away. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, as we were saying that? Oh, God. Oh, Duff. Uh, yeah, Duff. So, <laughs> so I think I have to go. Yes, understood. Understood, yes. Susan Get just came and wrote it down on a pad. <laughs> the boat just floated away. That's so funny. Thank you so much for being here, Duff. It means the world to me, too. Lily, I'm very Happy proud of you, and, and this is a great way for you to, to, to deal with this. I'm proud of you for, for putting yourself out there. I Just by you doing this, I know you're going to be okay because you, you're dealing with it uh, front on, and uh, I didn't have the tools you have. So good for, good on you, and you know I'm always here for you. And, Thank you. Uh, and, uh, People can get a, get a hold of me about this uh, through th 320 or, or change direction. Uh, mm -hmm. I do a couple things through Propeller. Perfect. Thank you, Duff. Cool. All right. Go get your boat. I'm going to get my boat. Okay, <laughs> you guys, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs>